And for a country where storms are a common occurrence, it's necessary to have a reliable and accurate weather and climate forecasting system. Now, just recently, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration and the Manila Observatory launched a project to improve weather and climate forecasts. Now, to tell us more about this, we have in the studio NASA Radiation Sciences our science program manager, Dr. Hal Maring, and the Manila Observatory Executive Director, Dr. Gemma Narisma. Good morning and welcome to New Day. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. It looks like um, you have uh, exciting uh, projects and experiments actually ongoing right now. It's been a, a, a week or so since you launched um, this um, almost whole... Almost three. three weeks. Almost three weeks since you launched this Camp X, which is... Uh, Cloud, aerosol, and monsoon processes, Philippines experiment, or as I said, Camp X. Now, what exactly is this all about? Okay. Well, <laughs> um, in response to our improving understanding of how the weather and climate system works, we've come to understand that small particles, aerosols, these things that float around in the air, come mostly, well, come, many come from combustion processes those little particles can have impacts on clouds, cloud properties, and precipitation. We know that in a qualitative sense, we don't have a terrific quantitative sense of it. And so um, my program at NASA has been putting a lot of effort and resources into developing a quantitative understanding. And that's why we're here. We're flying an inst two instrumented aircraft we're trying to make measurements in a very quantitative way to get a better understanding of how these processes work. And you say why we're here in the Philippines. Why the Philippines? What's so important about our atmospheric conditions that we do have? I mean, we have extreme, you know, weather forecasters. I mean, we do the weather, you know, every day. I'm like, okay, uh, it's a drought. There's no rain. And all of a sudden, six months, it's like flooding, tons of rain. Exactly. So is, is um, that, from from the impacts <laughs> point of view, um, and I'll let Hal expand on the, the NASA uh, perspective of satellites having a hard time mm. um, seeing what's going on in our region because of severe cloud cover and other, um, and, and other uh, aspects of, of the region. Definitely from an impacts point of view, there's a lot of things that we need to understand in our atmospheric environment because exposures and vulnerabilities are high. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, specifically for the Philippines, there are other confounding factors like development, urbanization, and land use, which in turn generate the sources that of, of, of this pollution that, that, that Hal was saying, aerosols, mm -hmm. combustion from vehicles um, from highly urbanized cities in the Philippines will affect weather and climate. And, and therefore, it's very important these processes um, happening, uh, especially during the southwest monsoon season, is very important to understand that. One study of ours recently that we published showed that urbanization can actually increase rainfall by about 20%. And then that means that's, that's a lot given the extreme amounts of rainfall that we've been having. Um, aside from that, the biomass burning um, in, in in Borneo, and, huh? Yeah. Do explain. It doesn't sound yeah. good. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, well, okay. Well, well. Let me address why the Philippines. Okay, just there you quickly. Go. Uh, and Gemma talked a little bit about that. But as I said, you know, my in my, in what I'm trying to do with my program, we've done similar experiments in other locations, and the Philippines was particularly attractive because we hadn't done anything in a tropical place. And um, because of the challenges of the persistent uh, uh, cirrus cloud cover, satellite remote sensing, we are NASA after all, um, is, that's, a, that's a huge problem. And so if we can come here with aircraft, make good measurements, and compare them to satellite measurements, we can improve our ability to understand the satellite measurements, which are ongoing. Those satellites are up there, and they're, they're they're making measurements all the time. And speaking of aircraft, we just uh, recently launched a NASA P-3B science uh, aircraft for a nearly, as you mentioned, two months investigation. Now, what are the capabilities of this aircraft and how will you actually uh, monitor what's uh, being collected uh, by the aircraft? Mm -hmm. so, I want to take a look at this. <laughs> yes. yeah. You're welcome to come. We'll give you a tour. Mm -hmm. um, it's a flying laboratory. It's, it's a reconditioned 
highly modified, um, was originally a military aircraft, it's now completely civilian. Um, and it's, it's loaded full of scientific instruments of two, two general kinds. Kinds that make measurements remotely, so like shine a light out mm -hmm. the bottom and, and, and look at the return of that light. And that tells us about the vertical distribution and composition of clouds and these small particles beneath the airplane. In addition to that, there are what we call in situ measurements, and these are um, like an instrument that sucks a little bit of air inside and measures the trace gases inside it. And it's, I don't know, I think there's 23 to 25 different instruments inside that airplane all operating at the same time. Wow, I mean, I mean that, that's uh, quite amazing and fascinating. And you mentioned earlier that you chose actually the month of August, September, um, you know, to, to actually launch uh, this project here in the Philippines. We did, and that was to get, to take advantage of the Southwest monsoon. Yeah. Um, uh, Indonesia, Borneo, there's a lot of burning mm -hmm. and, and large cities, and so pollution and biomass burning aerosol get carried up into the, the, the ocean west of, of the Philippines, and we want to see how those particles interact with clouds in a tropical environment. Okay, and of course, Gemma, all of this um, will greatly benefit us um, here in the Philippines and Pagasa and would allow us to, you know, better forecast uh, and predict our weather conditions. Exactly, exactly. Understanding those processes will help our, our weather forecasting models. Not only that, if we look further into the future, we're talking about possible impacts of climate change. We're doing all these climate projections and, and improving our climate projections allow us to do better um, exploration of what can happen and therefore what adaptation options should we do. On the human side of it, we have a lot of young scientists involved oh, in this campaign and, and there's about 15 of them um, and, and they're being immersed into this activity um, with this top scientist mm -hmm. from the U.S. Um, some of them might be able to fly um, in, in, the, in, in, in one of the planes and they're learning a lot. Um, and building that capacity of the future. I, I, I mean, that, that, that's, so, that's so great and interesting because uh, climate change is an issue. I mean, glo global warming and because of all of this, you know, the, the carbon footprint and, and the pollution is really affecting our, our, our country, our environment. A any final uh, tip or, or messages before I let you go? <laughs> And you can share. <laughs> yeah, it's a little preliminary to, yeah. to, to say things. I just want. But I it's would so like, far going well. Yeah. It's going really well. We're, yes. We came here to get certain conditions, and we're we're checking boxes very happily. Mm. Um, there was one, just a couple of quick things I wanted to add. Um, we're flying two aircraft, the P3 and a, and a Learjet, and and just to give folks an impression, you know those those weather conditions that you, your airliner goes around. That's where we go. That's interesting. You don't, you don't avoid them. Like, oh, I want it. <laughs> and, and, you know, we're very, very happy to be working with Manila Observatory. We're also happy to be working with Pagasa. They're providing us some um, radar imagery, and we're working with their forecasters. It's a, a very constructive interaction we've got here. Well, we're so happy to have you here, and we hope to have you back again of, after your whole experiment is, is done with. Thank sure. you so much. That's uh, Dr. Hal Maring from NASA and Dr. Gemma Narisma from the Manila Observatory.